Hello everyone, we are going to start with another session of uh, Advanced Performance Management. I am your facilitator Zaira Anis and we are going to cover the second question of uh, Activity Based Management, right? Uh, this is another question which uh, requires a lot of application of Activity Based Costing and Activity Based Management System. Uh, let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can, what we have in this question. Let's start from this question. Again, if you want to read this question at your own, you may pause this video and read it, try to understand it, and then you can continue with this video, right? All right, so table is formed. Uh, table is uh, formed of two autonomous division, timber and steel, and manufacture components for use in the construction industry. The company has always absorbed. Now, there is two autonomous divisions, right? The first one is timber and the second one is steel. Uh, which is used in the construction industry. The company always absorb production overheads on cost of each product on the basis of machine hours. Machine hours is basically a traditional system of absorption costing which we have already studied in F2 and F5. Now, this is basically what company is doing right now. Now, timber division, the first division, right? Our timber division manufacture timber frames used to support the roofs of new houses. The timber which is purchased pre-cut to correct length is assembled into finished frame by factory worker who fasten the components together, right? This is basically the introduction of the product. The division manufactures six standard sized of frame. Six standard size of frame. Now, try to think what do you mean by standard size of frame? I mean, what are the qualities? You may pause this video and think over it and then we can start and uh, we can start. All right, so standard size of frame, standard product or standard, standard product means that you are continuously manufacturing same kind of product, same methodology, same components, same uh, worker probably. So uh, it's, it's, it's more, uh, it's something which is actually you are quite uh, capable of or you have expertise in it, right? Which is sufficient for use in mostly newly built houses right so this is basically the first product which is the standard product now what about the second division which is a steel division steel division manufactures steel frames and roof support for use in small commercial buildings such as shops and restaurants there is a large range of product right there's a large range of products and many customers also specify bespoke designs now bespoke design means what this means um that the company is uh the company is not preparing a standard product company is not having a standard design whatever customer wants whatever customer requirement is we usually try to provide that requirement all right so also specify bespoke design for short production runs of uh, or one of building project okay steel is cut and drilled using the division's own programmable computer aided manufacturing machinery and is bottled together welded by hand. The company's strategy is to produce novel bespoke products at a price comparable to the simpler and more conventional products offered by its competitor, right? So we are here to provide novel bespoke sub products at a price comparable to the simpler and more conventional product offered by its competitors, right? Now, try to think what's the problem. You may pause this video. All right. The problem is that the company is manufacturing a unique product, a bespoke product, but the prices which it is charging is uh, is uh, comparable to simpler and more conventional product offered by its competitor, right? So what we are charging, we are charging similar price which is compatible to the product which is offered by the competitor, despite of the fact that our product has a unique capacity, unique property unique property in the sense that customer is actually uh, customer is actually uh, uh, asking us to prepare the product so we are providing whatever product we are providing that is according to the requirement of customer right and whenever you ask any company to provide some bespoke or some uh, you know uh, desired product or customized product you have to customer always have to pay some extra price for that but this is something which apparently seems that company is not charging, right? So 
it's it's uh, you know it's it's not something which usually as a management accounting we should accept that i mean let's see what what the what the what the next part is saying for example many of the steel divisions customer choose to have steel covered for example many of steel division customer choose to have steel covered in one of the wide variety of colored paints and other protective coatings at the end of production process right this is performed off site by a subcontract this is basically a kind of example of what kind of extra services they want this is performed by off site by a subcontractor after which the product is returned to steel division for dispatch to the customer right customers are charged to the subcontractor cost plus a 10% markup of choosing this option so what we are charging from the customer we are charging the cost subcontractor cost that whatever the cost we are bearing for this extra service and along with that we are also charging a 10% markup of uh, choosing that particular option so we are actually charging profit from the customer the board of steel division has admitted that this pricing structure may be too simplistic and that it is unsure of the overall profitability of sales of some groups of the product or sector of the market right now recent several customers have complained that incorrectly uh, that incorrectly applied paints has flagged off the steel after only a few months of use right more seriously a fast food restaurant has commenced litigation with dibble after it had to choose close for a week while steel roof frames supplied by steel division were repainted following this the production manager has proposed increasing the number of staff inspection inspecting the quality of the coating the coating on the frames and purchasing expensive imaging mach imaging machinery to make inspection more efficient now you may pause this video and you may try to think that is this a right strategy used by the uh, by the management that customer is actually asking you about uh, customer is actually complaining to you and at the as a as a as a response what you did you uh, you proposed to increase the number of staff inspection you tried to increase the number of inspection right for for checking the quality of the coating frames and you started purchasing expensive imaging machinery to make inspections more efficient probably uh, it's it's more towards uh, i mean when we have studied uh, pqm somewhere it says that there is a prevention cost and there is an appraisal cost it's better to spend on prevention rather than appraisal so company is actually spending on appraisal rather than prevention company is spending more on inspection uh, i mean it's a good idea if company uh, one company should spend some money on uh, on you know uh, protecting the issue fixing the issue right let's see what else do we have the chief executive officer at dibble has approached you as a performance management expert for your advice right as a con at a conference recently he told you i watched a presentation by ceo at a similar business of uh, to our talking about the advantages and disadvantages of activity based costing and how over several years the adoption of abm had helped them to improve both the strategic and operational performance right try to recall what we studied at uh, operational and strategic performance all right now i want you to do any detail i don't want you to do any detailed calculations at this stage but i would like you to know more about uh, i would like to know more about activity based costing and activity based management and know whether they would be useful for the company right so what they want they want uh, they don't want any detailed calculation but they want to know about what how uh, activity based costing and activity based management can be useful can be helpful for this division for their company right you are provided with the following extract of the most recent management accountant for timber steel division for timber and steel divisions right revenue is given here material cost is given labor cost is given subcontractor cost is given right so these are probably the direct cost right and these are the overheads production overheads 
سیٹ اپ ٹائم مشیننگ ٹائم اسٹوریج آف گڈس اویٹنگ اور ریٹرن فرام سب کانٹریکٹرز ٹرانسفر آف گڈس ٹو اینڈ فرام سب کانٹریکٹر انسپیکشن ان ٹیسٹنگ اینڈ ٹوٹل پروڈکشن اوور ہیڈ سو گراس پروفٹ از اراؤنڈ نائن زیرو تھری فائیو اینڈ فور فائیو ڈبل تھری رائٹ نا واٹس نیکسٹ نا یو آر ریکوائرڈ ٹو ایڈوائز دا سی ای او ہاؤ ایکٹیویٹی بیس کاسٹنگ کوڈ بی امپلیمنٹیڈ سو دیر آر جسٹ فور فیو اسٹیپس ہاؤ یو کین امپلیمنٹ آئیڈینٹیفیکیشن آف کاسٹ پول آئیڈینٹیفیکیشن آف کاسٹ ڈرائیور کیلکولیشن آف اوور ہیڈ ریکوری ریٹ اینڈ ایبزارپشن آف اوور ہیڈ اینڈ ریکاسٹ آف دی پروڈکٹ سو اٹس اے very basic requirement you just need to you know keep take the name of this company and just try to apply these things so that comp- you can answer this question so it's not a it's not a technical question right this part is a bit technical part assess whether it may be more appropriate to use activity based costing in timber and steel divisions than a costing on uh, then costing basis on currently used system right So actually the company, the CEO wants you to justify your answer if you think that activity based costing should be used and to justify your answer if you are in favor of you continuing with the current machining system, right? So this is basically what company, what CEO wants from you and that is for aid marks, right? So you have to, you have to justify if you are in favor of activity based costing. and you have to justify if you are uh, if you are uh, in favor of current costing system right so let's see what we key can we do try to recall what we have discussed in the in the in the first lecture where we said that there are three or four areas which company should check whenever company wants to decide whether to uh, whether company should uh, implement activity based costing system or not there were four there were three prerequisites mainly the first prerequisites was there should be multiple products right there should be multiple products the second was their product nature should be different nature should be different right what was the third part that was major overheads shall sorry major overheads should not be related to a single cost pool and the one more point was there where it says that uh uh if overheads overheads should be um not exactly major but uh, overhead should be a proper proportion of total cost proper in the sense if it's a uh, 10% 10% over uh, there is 90% direct cost and just 10% overhead so managing overhead will not benefit you right if your overheads are 60% of the total direct cost then definitely it's going to you know uh, impact create an impact right so let's we have if you if you want to if you want if you want to justify that whether company should use uh, abc or not we 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 have to check these four points right whether company If, if these points are applicable in the situation or not right so let's consider first first consider the timber division right now the first area was that company should be manufacturing multiple product right so company is manufacturing six standard six different uh, standard size of frame six different frames of individual of uh, different sizes so company is manufacturing multiple products right company is manufacturing multiple products the second one is nature should be different if nature of overheads are different these are nature of products are different the, these are standard size of frame standard size of frame means that uh, uh, probably products are are similar to each other or each product is very similar to uh, to uh, i mean products are of similar nature um I mean, it's if it's a standard product. If uh, if these product may be like each other 
for example if similar if same kind of activity is performed so that's 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 something which is uh, which is not much in favor of uh, activity based costing right and the third one is that major overhead should not be related to a single cost pool and over should overhead should be a proper proportion of the total cost right so let's check this part let's see if this is applicable or not let me try to open calculator if i can do uh yes all right so timber division means that in timber division the total cost is uh, this is the total cost right let me try to add it 12000 plus 4500 plus 75 it's 16575 plus 120 plus 50 plus 35 plus 205. That makes 16985. The total cost is 16985. Right? And what is the proportion of overhead? 120 plus 50 plus 35 plus 205. Oops, total overheads are given. I think I made a mistake. Um, total overheads are 205. Sorry. Plus 12,000. Plus 4,500. Plus 75. It's one six seven eight zero. One six seven eight zero. These are the. This is the total cost, and overheads are two zero five. So two zero five divided by one six seven eight zero times hundred. Overheads are one point two two percent. Overheads are 1.22 percent of the total cost. So this means what? Despite of having multiple products, despite of having probably a different nature of the product, because uh, you know every every product is of different size, but the total overheads are just 1.22 percent. Overheads are just 1.22 percent of the total cost. So that means what if you apply tim if if you apply activity based costing on in timber division, that means you will uh, you will have to you have to be a lot of cost because definitely activity based costing means there are a lot of costs involved in that. I mean implementation cost, motivation, motivating employees to uh, you know to apply ABC and to uh, make an information system to uh, to capture the data and information and you know everything. So probably it's uh, it will not be beneficial thing for company because the direct cost is lot is 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 very huge, and the overheads are just one point two two percent. So that means what company will be managing one point two percent of the total cost by managing the overheads, right? So overheads are not a significant proportion of the total cost. Along with that, there are just three major cost pools, right? There are three major cost pools, so. I mean, this. Uh, I mean, uh, this is not. But uh, this factor is enough to to you know uh, to continue to you know favor the fact that company should use uh, current addition, current absorption costing system because it's it's a more it's a more simple system, right? Situation is not complicated here. Product nature is not very complicated. Products are not very different from each other. So it's it's more favorable for the company to use current absorption costing. So why timber division should should use current absorption costing system? Because first condition is has been met, right? Timber division in timber division first condition has been met. Second condition is partially met, not hundred percent because company is manufacturing different products. But you know there are lot not lot of different products which in which all our products are different, right? The most important thing in which on the basis of which we can reject this claim is this one, right? So you have to justify why you think that current absorption costing system may not be relevant in the situation for timber division, right? Now let's move, move towards uh, steel division. Let's see what we have in a steel division. See, steel division, uh, in a steel division, uh, 
what is the what is the situation the company is manufacturing bespoke design right now bespoke design means what every requirement of i mean every customer is giving you different requirement some customers will give you some customer will ask to provide a quality product so there will be more inspection in that few customer will ask about certain product which are which company manufacture in large bulk sizes right the, the few customer may ask company to you know provide them with a very low quantity so in all these situations if demand of if requirements of customer are quite different then it is something uh, which actually uh, it, this is a kind of condition which is actually in favor of using activity based costing right so for uh, steel division multiple product is there right nature of products are very different and now let's consider major overhead should not be related to a single cost pool and overhead should not be a proper overhead should not be a proper proportion of the total cost right now let's see uh the total overheads uh, we can calculate total cost total cost is uh, see profit is 4533 so we can deduct revenue and we can take the difference between revenue and profit in order to get total cost that's also a, a method 20605 minus 4533 so the total cost is 16072 16072 right and total overheads are 4472 divided by 1602 it's around 27.8% 27.8% right total overheads are 27.8% of the total cost right now let's see if major overheads are related to a single cost pool or not let's see 2777 divided by 16072 sorry 2777 divided by 4533 it's 61% right so 61% overheads are actually related to a single cost pool that means if company use activity based costing then 39 uh yeah 39% overheads can will be distributed in a different manner right so that means what that means all four conditions have been met for steel division so steel division should use uh activity based costing now why we even check this uh this uh, this third requirement in uh timber because see total overheads are just 1.22% right total overheads are 1.22% that means uh the first uh, the the major category the major i mean more important requirement has been has not been met so it's uh, it's of little use to consider uh this uh, this 120 part although if you want to add that part you may but since the overheads are just 1.22 percent of the total overheads that means uh in considering this situation it's uh, it will be not beneficial for the company to apply to, to apply abc because abc contain lot of different costs that it itself include other some different costs i mean implementation cost staff motivation uh, data and everything so it's 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 not an easy task to apply abc so according to our analysis steel division should use activity based costing and steel division should use and timber division should not use mainly because of this reason and also because some partially because of this reason now uh you uh, now let's move to part b advise the ceo you just need to write these things at in your own wordings right obviously we cannot do that point b advise the ceo how on how activity based management could be used to improve business performance and table right now you have to advise the company how how means how activity based management not costing activity based management could be used to improve business performance in devil right business performance the question is asking about the performance right so how do you think abm can help the company right what we have studied in uh, previous part this is actually related i just wanted to show you guys a marking scheme 
so we will do it later all right i'm just trying to get a space right so what we discussed we discussed that activity based management system has two areas the first area is strategic level is application and strategic level and then operational level strategic level at a strategic level there are two areas the first one is product related and the second one is customer related and operational level pay its uh, value value added activity right so we need to identify which value which uh, activity is uh, activity related we need to identify which activity is value added activity this which activity is non value added activity which product are profitable product which product are not profitable product which customer is profitable customer which product is not profitable customer and if a customer is not profitable we need to identify or if a product is not profitable product we need to identify whether we should continue with that product or whether we should continue with that customer or not right so this is basically what we have already done in activity based management slides right now let's see uh, if there is any specific thing related to this question now the question asks you to uh, to guide the company sorry to improve both the strategic and operational performance right so at operational level we have to we are concerned with activity levels and for strategic level we are more concerned about the pro product and customers right so it's not really it's not it will not be we will not apply this this part the situation or we will not do this uh, part with respect to uh, timber because we are not suggesting timber to use activity based costing right so we will apply the third part to steel division why because we are suggesting that steel division should use activity based costing so since we are advising steel division to use activity based costing that division should use uh, we we have to tell that um, the management that how that division can have benefit uh, if company you if that division uses activity based management right so there are two things actually you may pause this video for a while and try to think how you can apply how a company can apply right all right now see there is at a strategic level we have to identify any product or any customer which is not a value added customer right so uh, there is a there is a cons there is a question in this question it says that uh, there is a product for example it says uh, that subcontractor that the customers are charged customers are charged to the subcontractor cost plus 10% markup of choosing that option so what the company is actually doing company is taking the cost of subcontractor and just adding 10% markup and they are charging customer at 110% of the total cost that means what that means if the subcontractor cost is 50 the company will charge $5 of profit and com company will charge $55 from that customer this is basically what the company is doing right but the important thing to consider here is that subcontractor cost is 650 for steel division right and this means what this means that company will charge 650 times 1.1 company will charge 715 from this customer right company will charge 715 the cost of sub subcontractor is 650 so apparently it seems that the product is making profit right the product or the service is actually generating profit but try to think whether it is actually generating profit or not we have to think like this right so if you see this uh, if if we use traditional activity based costing if we are using traditional activity based costing so we we will not have any idea about the composition of the overhead right we don't have any idea what what are the total overheads what is the cost tool and everything so what we need what we know is that total overheads are 1 million 
total machine hours are probably 200,000 and overhead absorption rate is 5 pounds per machine hour, right? But if company is using activity based management, then company can identify that analysis of overheads, is, what analysis of overheads is actually telling us, it's telling us that storage, these two costs are actually related to the subcontractor, right? Storage, let me magnify this. Storage, sorry, storage of goods awaiting awaiting to awaiting or return from subcontractors right and transfer of goods to or and from subcontractor right so these are two costs which are actually related to subcontractor now what the problem is problem is that this is not a direct cost this is a hidden cost in the overheads right so if we are using if we are using activity based costing we now know i mean initially we didn't know but now we know that there is 395 and 300 approximately 695 is the another cost which is actually related to subcontractor right so if you see uh, 300 plus 395 that makes 695 right 695 is the another cost which is actually directly related to the subcontractor so if we add if we add this cost to this part 695 right then what is the profit deduct this figure deduct this figure you will get the profit right in fact loss 715 minus 650 sorry 715 minus 650 minus 695 you will get a loss of 630 see this cost is giving us this product or this service is giving us lot of lot of lot of loss i mean huge amount of loss and where we went from see remember what the question said question said that the company will charge comparable comparable prices which are quite sim quite connecting with the conventional products offered by competitors so just because of that reason we was we were thinking what was the thinking thinking was that since the cost is just 650 before charging before switching to abc since we were thinking that the cost is just 650 so we, we were happy by adding 110 percent and we were thinking that this product is a profitable product which is actually not the case right now we know that this product is actually making losses so we have to do two things either increase the selling price because we are providing bespoke software bespoke uh, product to the customer so customer should pay us some extra amount of money in return of that or what we can do is that we can try to reduce the 695 because this cost is actually hurting us. We cannot, I mean, we have to work on this total one, one to uh, some, some cost, one to 1200 something cost. We have to work in this cost in order to reduce us. But I mean, we need to reduce this cost by $630, $630,000 is a huge amount. We have to do that. Otherwise, this product is not a profitable product. So see, what is the benefit of using ABM on performance? we can improve the performance performance means what profits right so we can improve the profit now we know that this that there is a product which we are very really happy we were providing that product very really happily but now we know that this product is not a profitable product this service is not a profitable service right and how we came to know this because of activity based costing because of activity based management right so this is the first part where we, where we said that we have to we have to apply at a strategic level right so you, you just need to write it at your own. I mean, obviously, I cannot help you to write the answer. You have to write it at your own. If you are at P5 level, you must be good in, in, in writing, right? What is the second part? Second part is uh, we need to identify operational performance. Operational performance is what? Operational performance is actually connected with value-added and non-value-added activity. So we have to identify which activity is value-added and which activity is non-value-added activity right you may pause this video and try to think that out of these five cost pools which activity is a cost uh, value added activity and which activity is not now see uh, we uh, in the in the in notes i have identified three uh, three areas the first activity there is a kind of a basic activity or the primary activity which is actually adding value to the product i mean packing refining mixing boiling whatever you are doing 
there is another activity which is not a direct activity which is not directly adding cause uh, adding value to the product but which is important for the production itself if you don't do that activity you will not be able to gen you will not be able to manufacture the product right and there is another activity which actually we call non value added activity where where i mean that is a kind of activity which is uh, uh, completely uh, not relevant for customer i mean which is completely a cause which is which custom for which customer is not paying you a single penny right so these are three types of activity first major second minor uh, i mean non value added and the third one is the middle activity right now machining time try to think let's start from machining time because that is a major cost right do you think machining time is a major cost is a, is a, is a value added activity yes it is because machining time means you are actually manufacturing the product so obviously if you reduce that i mean i mean if uh, if if in the in case company wants to reduce machining time definitely product quality get may get compromised right you need to identify if it's something can we can do with that but probably it's a value added activity it's a value added activity so we cannot eliminate this activity all right we can try to reduce but we cannot eliminate this then set up time for cam machinery this is not a value added activity but this is an activity which is uh, uh, which is actually required for the for the manufacturing of the product so probably we cannot eliminate this as well we can try to reduce this time right we can try to reduce we can try to if we can we can try to reduce this time but this is not we cannot eliminate this right so we can try to reduce this time but we cannot eliminate this now inspection and testing 425000 inspection and testing cost is around if you check 425 425 divided by 4472 that makes 9% 9.5 approximately 9.5% of the total overheads this is not a value added activity because if you produce your product correctly at first i mean uh, if you if you produce your product right and on in the first step in the first procedure then definitely you can reduce you can eliminate this cost so this is not something which for which customer is actually pay now people may argue that since these are bespoke software bespoke products so company needs more investigation right but uh, i mean there can be two views in that you may write in two different views first view is that a uh, company can company can try to check if and if company can company can try to standardize these products these bespoke soft bespoke product bespoke product company can try to stand use some standardized product if that is not impairing the quality of the product right because some may argue that look if you use a standardized product then this may i mean customer may not be satisfied with that but we try to think over it if we can reduce if we can use some standard so a standard products standard component so if you use some standard component then uh, then the then the issue can be can be minimized right similarly what the company did in here company uh, for for this there was a problem there was some problem so the production manager has proposed increasing the number of staff is inspecting the quality coating on the frame and purchase of expensive imaging imaging machinery to make inspection more efficient so despite of correcting the activity despite of improving the activity the quality of the product the production process at the first time company is actually making investing more money here so this cost should be should company should try to you know this is not a value added product value added activity company should try to eliminate this cost company should try to minimize this cost as much as they can right now so this is a non value added activity this is a value added activity this is not a value added activity but we may consider this to be an important activity for the business right now these two cost sorry 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 
these two costs storage of goods storage of uh, storage of goods awaiting to uh, awaiting or return from subcontractor 395 and transfer of goods to and from subcontractor that is 300 right so if we can reduce this transportation cost in any way i mean if comp company what company can do is company can try to reduce this cost by uh, by two things i mean company can try to you know find someone who is uh, closer to the organization who is closer to the factory so that uh, this distance can be minimized company can try to you know uh, identify whether this activity can be performed entirely because this is this is a permanent thing this is not a temporary activity this is a permanent activity so we can try to check if this activity can be done in our place because if we can do the same activity then uh, transfer of uh, goods to and from subcontractor this cost can be minimized i mean both of these costs are non value added activities so this cost can be minimized if we can do the same job or this cost can be minimum can be reduced if uh, if i mean this cost can be eliminated if we will do this job and this cost can will be minimized if we try to locate somewhere which is near which is which is nearer to to the factory so that we can reduce this transfer of to and uh, i mean transfer cost one more thing we can do is um uh, we can you know we can directly uh, send our product from subcontractor to the to the come to the to the the customer if we if we want to do that storage cost is is very high storage cost is 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 very high so this is also a non value added activity this is also a non value added activity so we can try we have to try to minimize this storage of goods awaiting or return from subcontractor cost so storage cost is very 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 company can try to reduce is by by you know improving its uh, its uh, its value chain improving its uh, its chain analysis that how how many goods are how many what what should be the minimum storage what is the minimum storage requirement or maybe what can what how many units it actually needs to keep in the store department or how many i mean how quickly it can deliver it to the customer so we need to channel this down we need to reduce this this cost by reducing the cycle time or the the cycle time to, to of, of the activity right so these two are com these two can be seen as non value added activity uh, and this can be this should be minimized right this should be eliminated in the first step or minimized or and this is completely a non value added activity so these three activities can be treated as a non value added activity or something which company should uh, uh, reduce and the first two can be can be continued right now so we discuss two areas uh, strategic and operational one more thing which you can discuss is uh, is company can you know if company is manufacturing a, a company may try to consider its repricing the product because uh, if we are reducing our cost we cannot reduce our cost much right i mean if this is the activity and if we are unable to reduce cost to 630000 then we can we can try to reduce cost as much as much as we can without compromising the quality we may you guys may write some value engine value des redesigning or restructuring thing here or uh, we can uh, increase the selling price so that we can you know reduce this cap we can try to reduce this cap right so repricing can be done here uh, in order to reduce this cost and uh, one more thing company can do if these if the overall product is very complicated so we can try to think to redesign or restructure the product in such a manner i mean if if customer come up with a product then we can you know we can we should try to minimize its overall design of the product so that low cost it will contain low cost because see the more complicated cost means more com more complicated product means you have to incur more cost you have to labor has to work hard labor has to understand the requirements so if you are trying to keep your products design simple and more kind of standard not exactly standard but more closer to the standard then labor will be more comfortable in that case 
and the inspection cost can be reduced in that manner so designing can be reduced bespoke instead of using bespoke so uh, bespoke parts we can use some standard parts as well one more thing which actually examiner asked was how it can improve the business performance in devil see performance actually means what uh, acha the one more thing we can we need to identify if you want to write here if you think if you if you if you want to write you may write that performance measurement i mean uh, what we considered we need, we considered the pricing of the product i just need some space we considered the pricing part of the product we considered the uh strategic abm at a strategic level where we considered that uh, there was a product which is loss making product and we can identify in the same way we can identify some loss making customers if we if the data is available at operational level we try to identify some activities which are non value added activities and we need to we need to you know minimize or reduce eliminate those activities we can we can redesign the product we can not redesign we can try to keep design simple in order to in order to reduce this cost uh, this this uh, bespoke cost we can try to have some standard product or we can have we can you know this can help uh, abm can also help us uh, help the division in order to improve the performance part of the company performance measurement is also important so if you want to analyze performance of uh, the employees that part can be improved how because you see uh, we try to we try if you want to uh, cut down your cost you have to eliminate some activities which are non value added right so you have to think outside the box that how these activities can be eliminated i mean i mean see this is the scenario right so you have to check which how we can try to reduce these three costs right you have to identify some innovative idea you have to think like that so you have you are more responsible towards the reduction towards the product improvement so performance system can i mean employee performance can be Uh, based on the identification or improvement in the products in the business in the customers you know something like something which we can in which we can actually see the improvement and we actually can we can see that how innovative how productive our employees are because uh, if employee if the production manager is working in a in a very similar manner every year then definitely that means it he is not motivating towards improvement he's not he is he's he's just do, doing a routine job a regular job but if he is motivated towards the product improvement towards reduction towards design improvement towards activities improvement then definitely that will help the you know keep him motivated and for that activity based management can definitely can help the organization right so these are some things which we which we can write in this 13 marks requirement right thank you for watching this video have a nice day